We get lots of questions on how to set up dosing pumps as well as calcium reactors. And since we'll start by dosing the saltwateraquarium.com 700, then likely switch to a calcium reactor, I'm gonna walk you through each setup procedure in separate videos. To dose your tank with dosing pumps, you'll need a couple things. A dosing pump, dosing solution, usually alkalinity calcium or magnesium, dosing solution reservoir, or you can just use a container that the solution came in. Tubing. Tubing is usually included with the pump and I like to color code solutions so I can easily trace lines. This is especially helpful when you have multiple dosing pumps dosing different solutions. Once you've got your gear and it's installed, now you need to test. Yep, you gotta test your tank's water. You wanna test your tank's water so you know where the level is of the element or compound that you're going to dose. So grab your favorite test kit, run the test, and then write that value down. Then, then you're gonna head over to saltwateraquarium.com and use our calculator. Go to the chemistry section, click on chemistry, and the calculators pop up right here on top. We have an alkalinity calculator, calcium calculator, and magnesium calculator. I've been talking a lot about alkalinity, so let's go with alkalinity calculator. I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna load up. First thing to notice, is that there's a liquid dosing calculator and a powder dosing calculator. So if you're using a dry, alkalinity reagent, then we allow for that here. So we're gonna use a liquid one. We're gonna put in total water volume in gallons. And let's say we got a nice eh, 90 gallon tank for my old 90 gallon tank days. And we can go in here and select which alkalinity product that we're gonna use. So let's say we're gonna use the Fritz RPM liquid alkalinity elements, got that. Our current DKH is, oh, let's say seven. You just move the slider here. And we wanna get it up to 8.2, sounds fair. Boom, we already have an answer right here. We're gonna need 54 milliliters to get that from seven to 8.2. Now that we know how much alkalinity solution we're supposed to dose, it's time to dose. As I talked about in this quick tip, start with one half of the recommended dose, especially with alkalinity. You also wanna spread out the dose over the course of the day. If you have to dose 20 milliliters, then it's better to dose 10 milliliters in the morning and then 10 milliliters in the evening. Spreading out your dosing is especially important when you need to dose large amounts of solution. Every dosing pump interface is different, so what you're seeing here may not be the same one for your pump. The key takeaway that I'm showing you is that I'm spreading out the dose over the course of the day. And I'm doing that by setting the dosing interval to 24 hours. The controller does some math to figure out how often and how much to dose each time that it does dose in order to spread out the dose evenly across the day. After a day of dosing, retest to that tank parameter that you're dosing for. You want to see what effect the dosing had on that tank parameter. Now, don't be surprised if you just see a little change. In fact, that's what I want you to see. I want you to see a small little bump. So say alkalinity from 7 to 7.2 or calcium from 400 to 420. I don't want you to go from seven to eight and a half in alkalinity. Small little changes, that's what you're shooting for. You get that small little change, now you know, okay, I'm just gonna let this ride for a couple days, let that level slowly come up. Gentle slope is what you're looking for. Now here's the fun part about dosing and testing, writing those parameters down. You can start to get insights into your tank without even looking at your tank. For example, say you're dosing alkalinity or even calcium and you're dosing the same amount every day, you're noticing that those tank levels are staying stable. Well, now nothing seems to change in your tank, your dosing doesn't change either, but now your alkalinity and maybe even your calcium levels are starting to rise out of nowhere. That can be an insight that something's off in your tank and coral growth has slowed down. I've actually seen this from afar, I've been watching the results of my Neptune Systems Trident, my alkalinity starts to rise, even though I haven't changed anything in my tank, I'm like, huh, wonder if something is off. So dosing, testing, writing down those test results, it's great to see the change in your tank, even if you're not looking at the tank. And here's the really fun part. Don't be surprised if when you start dosing your tank, all of a sudden coral growth takes off. So say you're adding 20 mils a day of alkalinity. Well, all of a sudden 20 mils isn't getting it done for maintaining that coral growth. Maybe that all of a sudden you got more of that compound or element available to those corals. Now they can start growing faster because you've given them more of what they need. And Keep this in mind, as your tank really starts to grow with those corals, you're gonna need more and more of that solution that you're dosing. 
A fully grown in hard coral tank is going to use up a lot of calcium and a lot of alkalinity. So what you're dosing today is going to work in the future, which is all right, because that means you're having progress in your tank. Setting up dosing pumps, really straightforward. Look, go slow with this. You're going to start to see results. You're going to have to increase your dosing. Testing will give you insights on what's going on with your tank and what you need to do. Then things really start to get fun. You get everything dialed in. You really know what works for your tank. And then it's really just set it, forget it. Test once a week, keep an eye on things, and you're good to go. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Till next time, enjoy your tanks. Happy dosing and testing, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.